Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have a definite integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine t over the square root of 1 plus sine squared t dt. I like this one because it requires a couple integration techniques and you have to be mindful about the limits of integration, which are so important. Okay, so to start off, the first thing that popped out at me was that we needed to do a u sub because I have this lonesome cosine t in the numerator and that cosine t dt could get absorbed if I just let u be sine t, not sine squared t, just sine t. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's let u be sine t and then du is cosine t dt, just like we wanted. Now, this is the important part. Make sure you switch your limits of integration because I'm gonna rewrite the integral in terms of u so the limits need to match. They need to be in terms of u also. Currently, these limits belong to the variable of the integral, so they belong to t. So I'm gonna substitute them in for t right there with how I define my u sub. So u of zero, my lower limit, is sine of zero, which is zero. And then u of pi over two, the upper limit, is sine of pi over two, which is one. So now let's rewrite our integral entirely in terms of u. So we'll go from zero to one. And then this is lovely right here. This cosine t dt, that's just du, beautiful, over square root. And then this is one plus u squared. How are we doing? Okay, good. Now from here, you look at it and you go, oh no, oh no, why wasn't this a minus? We'd be done. So instead, what we need to do now is use trig sub, right? If it was minus, then we would know it's sine inverse, bada bing, bada boom. But it's trig sub time. So which substitution is appropriate? When you have addition between your two terms, the variable quantity squared and the constant, we use tangent theta. So now it's substitution number two time. We're going to let u equal tangent theta. And then now differentiate both sides. So du is secant squared theta d theta. And then here's the important part again. We need to change our limits of integration. Currently, they're in terms of the variable of the integral, which is u. So when you switch them for trig sub, you're going to substitute them in for u, not theta. You're going to solve for what they are in terms of theta. Okay, so 1 equals tangent theta which means theta is pi over four. That's gonna be my new upper limit. And then the lower limit zero is equal to tangent theta, which means theta equals zero. Do you notice the difference between how we do substitutions and changing the limits of integration for u sub versus trig sub? That's why I thought this problem was so important to do. Okay, so then now after the trig sub, what do we have? We have integral from zero to pi over four du in the numerator is all of this secant squared theta d theta over square root one plus u squared that's tan squared theta and then this is where the beauty of trig sub comes in so the whole point is we use the pythagorean identity right here so one plus tan squared theta that's secant squared theta but then we have secant squared theta underneath the radical so technically, it's absolute value of secant theta, but notice we're in quadrant one, so we know secant theta is positive, so we don't need to keep the absolute value bars. So we have secant squared theta over secant theta, which just gives us integral zero to pi over four, secant theta d theta. And then antiderivative of secant theta, I derived it in the lecture video on trig integrals, but I recommend me memorizing it because it's not like a super intuitive derivation. So it's natural log absolute value, secant theta plus tan theta, and then we're gonna evaluate it from zero to pi over four. So plugging in the upper limit, we'll have natural log absolute value, secant of pi over four is rad two, tangent of pi over four is one, minus natural log absolute value, secant of zero is one, tangent of zero is zero. Beautiful, so this is just one, natural log of one is zero, and then rad two plus one, that's not negative. So I can just write my final answer without absolute value bars. We have natural log of rad two plus one, boom. 
I thought this was just so lovely. It was such a good Calc 2 standard integration problem, but also made sure that you knew your trig, you knew how to keep track of your limits of integration, you knew multiple kinds of substitutions, just good like building block of calculus, right? Nothing too spicy. So I know some of you guys are gearing up for the fall or brushing up on some of your skills. I thought this would be a good problem for you guys to tackle, not too crazy, but don't worry. I have a few spicy ones I'm gonna record in the coming days, along with a lot more content for you who are studying for the AP Calculus exam. That's gonna be my focus this next academic year. So stay tuned. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V, and I'll be back sooner than later. Bye!